The following program is presented by the National Committee on United States and China Relations, www.ncuscr.org. Okay, there we go. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Barry Naughton, of course, has talked about the urgency with which the Chinese government responded to the economic uh, downturn. And as a non-economist, I'm certainly not going to try to address that side of the issue. But it's clear to me, looking through the data, that the social situation in China was such that Beijing certainly wanted to react quickly and strongly to the economic crisis. Uh, we're all, I think, familiar with this diagram that shows the rising tide of mass uh, protests, incidents from 1993 to uh, where there were nearly 8,700 through, uh, what, the 87,000 of uh, 2005, after which the government, in its wisdom, decided that publishing such statistics was probably not a good idea. Um, however, they have, Chinese media has given some indications. Uh, Liao Wang talked of something like 90,000 incidents in 2007. Uh, the Blue Book uh, talked about more than 80,000 in 2007. And this most recent edition of the Blue Book simply said the prospects are not good. And then it went on to list the major uh, incidents of 2008, the uh, Wang'an riot, the uh, Fuyu, Huizhou, Menglian, and several others. And lest we forget uh, the Wang'an riot, it really was a major, major incident. That's the crowd of more than 10,000 that is responding to uh, uh, the death of a 16-year-old girl who was at least widely reported, although never verified, that she had been raped and murdered. Um, and that is the, uh, uh, the Public Security Bureau um, the morning after. Um, at any case, uh, with, along with these large-scale protests that we've seen, there's also good evidence um, that the Chinese population has been concerned about perceived uh, injustices in Chinese society. For instance, uh, the report on social harmony that came out uh, a few months ago, six months ago, uh, said, who has asked people in a major survey, who's benefited most from reform? Well, everybody, with the exception of one group, says cadres have been the big, best, biggest beneficiaries of reform. You may have guessed that the one dissenting group was the cadres themselves. Um, they thought that actors and actresses had made benefited more. Um, at any case, uh, worse, uh, when you ask people about the promotion of party cadres, uh, at least half the people uh, perceive it as fair or unfair, depending on which way you want to look at it. That's a slight improvement uh, from a survey, similar survey two years ago. But still, if half your population says, I don't trust the way my leaders are selected, uh, that's not a particularly optimistic outcome. Uh, and uh, income disparities seem to be drawing more attention. More people see income disparities as unfair in 2008 compared with two years before. Only 28% uh, now say that they are, um, that these income inequalities are fair. Uh, that is to say that a lot of people uh, are seeing differences in income as a result of personal, in, uh, personal connections or uh, corruption or whatever, and not based on ability. Um, at the same time, uh, we see that uh, China's economy, uh, the ability to provide jobs, uh, the rate of increase in the number of small and medium-sized enter enterprises 